good. Right. Uh, oh gosh. Um, welcome to the lattice se session of the third day of Eurocrypt 2016. Um, so the only thing that's keeping you between you and lunch are two talks. Um, the first of which is, is this one. It's given, uh, it's paid by Nicola Gamma, Malika Isabashen, Bong Noyen and Shang Zhi. And Nicola is going to give the talk. Uh, give the talk. Thank you for the introduction. Um, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, indeed, it's a very long title, uh, Structural Lattice Reduction, etc. Huh? Uh, so, in this paper, we cover a lot of topics ranging from lattice reduction, worst case to average case connection, uh, some abstraction tools to connect uh, more general crypto building blocks to lattice based systems, uh, and uh, also some uh, generic tools of compilation theory like uh, automata or um, binary decision diagram to the world of homomorphic encryption. So here in this talk, I will just pick three subtopics at random and uh, with Gaussian heuristic and starting with the generalization of CIS and LWE to arbitrary groups. So uh, in general, when we talk about lattice-based crypto, we rely on the two problems, CIS and LWE. Uh, they are in general defined using uh, huge matrices uh, um, presented with linear algebra, and uh, they use, in general, a lot of parameters. Some of them are uh, meaningless, like, for example, the parameter Q. So for that reason, it has been banned from my talk. And instead, I will adopt a group theoretical point of view, and uh, uh, which will emphasize the duality between the two problems. So let's start with a short uh, introduction of what are lattice problems. Uh, so, lattice is a discrete subgroup of Rn. Uh, it's usually described by a basis. There are infinitely many bases that are all related by uni unimodular uh, transformation. Uh, but at least they have the same determinant up to the sign, which is the volume of the lattice. So, there are a lot of lattice problems in the literature. So, here I will just keep it simple and stupid. So let's say there is only one lattice problem in, the w in this world. It's uh, given a lattice and a ball, find a lattice point within a ball. So the lattice is described by a basis, and the ball is described by its center and radius. So there are three flavors of this problem. There are the approximation problems, where the ball is much larger than the lattice volume. So in this case, there are exponentially many solutions even if you translate the ball, or if you take another norm, like square balls. Uh, there are the exact problems, where you take the ball approximately equal to the uh, lattice volume, so if you translate it, there will always be approximately a single solution. And there are the unique problems where the volume of the ball is much smaller than the lattice. So if you pick a ball at random, it will contain no solution at all, and only specially crafted solution contains a very unique uh, point. So what about the hardness of these problems? Well, it's all a matter of density. You compare the, ratio, the volume of the ball with the volume of the lattice. If the density is doubly exponential, you get polynomial time algorithms like LLL or BKZ. Uh, if the volume of the ball 
is w exponentially smaller than the volume, the same algorithms will also solve your, your instance. So that's the kind of duality between the two. <laughs> and in the center, for the exact problem, you get NP-hard problems. So where is the crypto in this picture? Well, it's here when the crypto is based on the CIS problem in the approx side, or here on the unit side with LWE. That's all you need to know about lattices. Now, let's define the CIS function. So, uh, I will present it with groups. So let's start with a random, with a, an, an abelian group G, and let's pick M elements at random in this group. What is the sys function? Well, it's simply you take M integers and output the linear combinations of the GI with these coefficients. So this function is totally linear, but if you restrict the input domain to only short uh, elements, look for, for example in the ball of radius beta, then magically your function becomes one way. It means that although for each image there are an exponential number of pre-image, you cannot find any of them in any reasonable time. So inverting the sys function is the JCS problem, which is sometimes called subset sum problem depending on the shape of the group. So how is it connected to lattices? Well, if you solve the JCS problem, it uh, uh, is almost equivalent to finding short vector in a uniformly random lattice of this particular class, L of G, which are all the integer lattice whose quotient is isomorphic to G. So of course, since in this talk, we are free to choose the, the, the structure as we want, uh, and even mimicking the standard class group distribution, then we can get a very nice uh, self-random reducibility for general lattices, but I will not talk about that here. Most importantly, uh, what we should remember is that 20 years ago, ITI proved that if we can efficiently solve the this problem for, uh, for this particular group on the average, then we can solve any uh, lattice problem in dimension n. And in our paper, we generalize the results to every group provided that they have a large enough cyclic component. So yeah, I really said every group, not many groups. Uh, so basically, if you want to, to base a problem on cis, on, on what does the, the hardness depend? It depends only on two factors. Uh, the first one is the order of G, the hardness increases with it. And the second one is the radius of the, the expected answers. And basically, the hardness does not depend on anything else. Not M, not the structure of D, not the, the choice of the family. So that's for CIS. Now let's go to LWE. So for, in order to introduce LWE, we need to recall uh, some basic properties of uh, duality. So, uh, the we start for, with the definition of a character. So, a character is simply a morphism, an additive morphism from a group G to the torus. The torus are just the real numbers modulo one. So, it's a group, it's not a ring, there is no multiplication. And every group is isomorphic to its dual group, which is the set of all the characters. Now that we know that, the LWE problem is, uh, well, you pick M elements in a group, you choose a random secret character in the dual group, and the goal is if I give you M evaluations of this character with some noise, some Gaussian noise, can you recover this character? So in 2005, Regev defined it using the special groups uh, Z over Q to the N. Uh, like I tied it for CIS, but it can be generalized for every abelian group. Uh, so let me give a small example for a cyclic group. I take the, the group Z over 25Z, and this secret character, uh, which just takes A and outputs 2A over 25 modulo 1. Uh, so uh, if I take GLWE samples, uh, I will have to be to remain close to this value. So uh, here 
all the samples are taken near the black zone. And instead, if I choose random sample in the rectangle, it would look like the green one with no particular structure. And of course, the LWE problem is if I don't give you the secrets, can you distinguish the two distributions? So that's the hard problem. If you solve it even with a quantum computer, you destroy all lattice-based cryptography. Uh, so from that, what is the LWE function? So as before, you take m elements uniformly at random in a group G, and the function is simply the following. It goes from the dual group to the torus, uh, and it associates to a character the set of its evaluations. So this function, again, is one way, and if you invert it, you break the JLWE problem. So worst case to average case reduction. In 2005, Regev proved that if we solve LWE for the group Z over QZ to the N, then you, uh, there is a quantum uh, adversary against every N-dimensional lattice. And in this paper, we generalize that to any group, which are sufficiently large. Okay, so now how do we use that for lattice cryptography? Well, there are two uh, techniques in lattice cryptography. The first one is using trapdoors, uh, so, and the second one is without trapdoors. So the first one will have many similarities with RSA, the second one, many similarities with Diffie-Hellman. Uh, so if you remember in RSA, well, this function, m gives m to the e modulo n, uh, is the main one-way function, and it has a trapdoor, so for example, this integer d, which is the inverse of e modulo phi of n, it takes an, uh, maybe a lot of time to compute from n and e, but once you have it, you can invert the function for any input in polynomial time. So for lattice-based schemes, you have two one-way functions. You have the GCS function and the LWE function. And again, there is a notion of trapdoors. If you get a short basis of this orthogonal lattice, then you can invert both functions in polynomial time for every input. So there are already a lot of contractions based on these trapdoors, so I won't give any more details here. Uh, what is more interesting is the Diffie-Hellman-based cryptography. So let's recall uh, what is Diffie-Hellman. So we all know uh, it's between Alice, a key exchange between Alice and Bob. Alice picks a random a integer modulo Q and sends G to the A. Uh, Bob speaks a random integer and sends g to the b, and both will compute the same uh, key g to the ab out of that. So in this uh, setting, uh, you combine a one-way function, uh, which is the discrete log one-way function, the exponentiation, f of a equals g to the a, with a pairing e of ab equals g to the ab. And this pairing has the property that it can be computed even if either a or b is hidden by f not both. So uh, here in Lattice, uh, and yeah, ex uh, the security uh, is the DDH assumption that you cannot distinguish uh, l gamma uh, triples from random. If we want to extend that to lattices, uh, what would be the pairing that we would use and what would be the one-way functions? Well, the one-way function, we already described them. It's the cis function and the LWE function. All we need is a pairing that combines the two. Huh? So basically, given a character and a combination, it will just apply the character to the linear combination of the group elements. So once we have it, well, we immediately get the lattice-based key exchange. So Alice picks small integers and returns uh, the cis evaluations uh, the cis linear combination. Uh, Bob chooses a random character and returns the LWE evaluation. And from that, both can compute the pairing. So in the case of Alice, there will be some noise. But of course, every noise can be uh, removed by rounding the, the result on the torus. So like that, uh, you get an analog of Diffie-Hellman. Of course, since Diffie-Hellman is the core of l gamma encryption, you get two l gamma schemes, which are, uh, well, the Regev encryption and the dual Regev encryption. So why are there two schemes? It's because the pairing we use is not symmetric. 
So there was two one-way functions instead of one. Uh, but for the security, you get immediately get the in CP as secure and maybe other post-quantum uh, properties uh, since we are rely on LWE assumption, for example. And similarly, many of uh, the uh, lattice scheme can be viewed as analogs of the RSA or discrete log uh, uh, instantiation for, for lattices. So now, uh, in the two minutes I have, I will just uh, uh, give the outline of what happened for a fully homomorphic encryption. So we chose one particular line, uh, plot line of uh, homomorphic scheme, which is the, the one from uh, uh, Gentry, Shiat, and Waters, and the optimizations of uh, 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 AP14 <laughs> and uh, Leo Duca Mitiantio last year. Uh, so basically, what uh, this scheme can do, so like other, of course, addition and linear combinations, but uh, the most unique thing uh, for these schemes is that these are the, the only schemes that are able to evaluate uh, long conjunctions with a noise uh, propagation, which is only sublinear in the length, so which almost does not depend on the depth multiplicative depth of, of the circuit. Uh, and uh, there is also this uh, very nice bootstrapping in less than one second. Um, so in this paper, what we had what is the ability to evaluate uh, any binary decision diagrams or deterministic automata uh, with only sublinear noise overhead in either the number of variables or the length of the word which is tested. Uh, we also had universal composition of Boolean function and also a slower internal bootstrapping. So it really matters a lot because when we think of everyday life problem, we usually think it of as a finite state machine algorithm, not really as a polynomial arithmetic where the result is some kind of combination between the Lagrange interpolation of the input, etc., etc. So having the automata logic or the binary decision diagram logic uh, looks way more general than uh, what we can do with polynomial expressions. So the only drawback uh, is really practice. I mean, uh, the gate complexity of this circuit lags light years behind what we can do usually with BGV or Yash. Uh, so maybe one of the big open problem is performance. But for these schemes, I mean, we are all optimizing polynomial things. So uh, between the turtle and the rabbit, we never know who will win in the end. Uh, so basically, that concludes my talk. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. I'm just curious, so, so this, this more general way of describing um, LWE with, with, with character values, um, I mean, it's clear that syntactically one could do the same with non-abelian groups, at least if you go to complex value of characters. Uh, I mean, is, is this a value at all that anybody think about this, or is this just, you know, uh, formalized abstract nonsense? Uh, with non-abelian group? Yeah, that's an interesting question, yeah. Um, yeah, it's possible that uh, some of the results translate also to the non-commutative case, yeah. Any other questions? So I'm gonna move over to the other side of the room in case someone's there. No, no one wants to wave their hand. No, okay, well, thank the speaker again, thank you.